Brought to you by Tenet Controls. Lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. Well, hello again to all of our model building friends out there. Boyd here with you, and welcome to episode 71 of The Model Shop. Coming to you again this week live from our shop here in San Antonio, Texas. Great to be back with you guys after a couple weeks break. Uh, we're going to kick off things tonight with a look at the Fiesta 35 model show that I attended yesterday. I posted some uh, details about that over on the uh, Model Shop Google page. We had a great time over there yesterday. It was a fantastic show. Uh, there were literally thousands of uh, model kits for sale over in the vendors area. I had a great time walking through there. Wound up picking up a couple of nice kits. And uh, we'll show you a look at those here towards the end of the show. And uh, on the upcoming episodes, we'll do an out-of-the-box kit review on some of those. Uh, and then we had a, a wonderful show to attend. We actually entered a couple of models here that we built that you guys have seen and uh, brought home a couple of awards, so we we're really happy with that. Uh, there were literally hundreds of models in the show. We had a great turnout this year. Uh, one of the things I was really happy to see is we had a really good uh, turnout in the junior category this year. Lots of, lots of uh, young modelers out there that uh, participated this year, so that was great. Uh, everybody at the show was really happy to see that. And uh, we're going to follow that video up with a uh, out-of-the-box kit review tonight for you guys. Some of you uh, military modelers out there might enjoy this. This is the uh, Battle of Midway Carrier. Uh, by Revell, it's kind of a vintage kit. It's uh, uh, it's not really marked on the box what scale it is, but I think it's around 1,550 or 1,530 scale. Uh, it's supposed to be around 20 and a quarter inches long or so when it's finished up. The nice thing about that kit is that it can be built up as uh, uh, all three different type ships that were in the same class of the World War II aircraft carriers, uh, the USS Enterprise, uh, the USS Hornet, or the USS Yorktown. There were some... Uh, subtle differences in the superstructure and some of the gun emplacements but they give you all the parts in the kit to build uh, any one of those versions and of course you guys know I'll be building that up as the Enterprise I've always wanted to build a uh, World War II version of that ship and uh, actually the Enterprise is kind of hard to find out there so I want to thank our uh, good modeling friend Calvin Sweet for sending that to me and uh, I'm gonna have a great time building that up we're gonna build that up here on the show for you guys in the uh, next uh, couple of weeks we'll get started on it I really don't have anything to update you guys on tonight on the Blue Thunder. I was really busy getting ready for the show this week, and I've been really busy working on some client builds here and busy at work, so we'll come back next week and get uh, back to work on the Blue Thunder and get that back on track, uh, so you can look forward to that a little bit further down the line. We're going to finish things up on uh, the show tonight with a uh, on-the-bench modeling tip uh, concerning polishing out the paintwork on your uh, scale model cars. A lot of you guys wrote in and asked uh, if you could see a little bit more detail on that by request. So we've uh, put together a little segment here and show you guys some tips on uh, how you can polish out your uh, your paintwork uh, to get rid of any little dust specks or any little imperfections in the paint. So we hope you'll enjoy that. Okay, guys, we're going to take our usual break here really quick so I can get everything set up, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll have a uh, look at the uh, uh, Fiesta 35 model show. I, I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. There were some absolutely stunning models in the show this year in the uh, competition side. The competition was really tough. Uh, being an IPMS sanctioned show like it is, the judges were really, really uh, tough. They looked for every little thing on there. We're actually going to do an episode here upcoming for another modeling tip. Uh, after I spoke with some of the judges at the show, I picked up some information about some of the things that they look for, uh, which will be really helpful for those of you out there who are interested in uh, getting into uh, competing with your models when you go to these various contests and everything, so uh, things that you want to do to prepare your model to help you have a better chance of winning something, so that'll be interesting too. But let's take our break really quick, guys. We'll come back and we'll uh, have a look at the Fiesta 35. That's 35 years in a row they've been running this show, so it's a great show, and I know you guys will really like it. Back right after the break, everybody. See you then.
All right, everybody, back with you again. We're ready to go. Got the video all cranked up. Uh, just a little bit of fair warning on this one, guys. Uh, for some reason, when I shot the video at the beginning, the uh, image stabilizer wasn't turned on my camera, so some of it's a little bit shaky, but you can get the uh, general idea. And uh, fear not, towards the end, I've got a still picture uh, slideshow that's uh, really clear that you can see all the uh, beautiful detail on, on all the models that were in the uh, model competition side of things. But uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. We'll be back right after that, and uh, we'll get to work on uh, doing our out-of-the-box kit review. But in the meantime, enjoy the Fiesta 35 model show, guys. Be right back after that. Hi there again everybody, Boyd here with you. Well you can see today we're at the 34th annual Fiesta Model Show in San Antonio, Texas, my hometown. I'm really glad to be here today. You can see we've got thousands of models in the uh, vending area here for sale to pick and choose. You can find literally anything you're working for. And we've got a really great turnout today for the models in the competition show area. We're gonna pick up the camera here and take a walk around and give you a grand tour of the show. It's the 34th annual, so that's pretty amazing. They've been doing this for 34 years in a row now. The show keeps getting bigger and better every year. So let's take a look and see what we've got here today, guys. Sit back and enjoy. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now 1 p.m. and it's time for pro raffle numbers.
the car jacked up and you can see the front axle, but you've got no way to steer the front wheels.
that one? Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So Miguel, Leon, uh, Javier Garcia.
Well, how about that, guys? What a spectacular show it was. There were so many beautiful models. It was just one after the other. I had a few of them that were uh, kind of really stood out in my mind. I really liked the, uh, uh, in the airplane category, I really liked that uh, German Messerschmitt BF-110 Night Fighter and the uh, silver uh, uh, B-25 Mitchell with the kind of uh, Indian Chief artwork on the front of it. I mean, there were just so many in the cars. There were uh, the Eleanor Mustang, the 55 Ford pickup. I mean, they were just beautiful, beautiful models. And talking to some of these guys, you know, they spent uh, about a year building some of them. I mean, it's just fantastic the amount of effort they put into them. But it's just fun to go and enter the contest, whether you're trying to win anything or not. It's nice to just show up and put your model on display. The more models that they have there, the better. And uh, the crowd of people that come to see the show really enjoy uh, seeing, you know, the wide diversity of models and everything. Uh, kind of typical of a lot of these shows, the sci-fi uh, subjects were a little bit uh, uh, underrepresented, but that's kind of typical unless it's a, you know, a sci-fi only show like Jersey Fest and Wonder Fest and some of those places. But, uh, you know, it's it's picking up a little bit every year. And uh, But uh, the sci-fi models that were there were all really, really nice. I thought that uh, Mad Max kind of looking black tank thing was really, really cool. That took a really uh, lot of effort and a lot of imagination to come up with that whole design and everything. That was completely scratch built. And uh, so, but we were happy to even place with any of our models. You might have noticed we had a few of our builds that you guys have seen uh, that we built up here on the show. We had our Spitfire in there. We had our uh, U-boat. We had some other stuff in there. But we had a great time, and uh, we're looking forward to next year. I made a typo and uh, mistake at the whole beginning of it. It was actually the 35th annual, so it's 35 years in a row that they've been having this show, and it keeps getting better and better every year. They uh, made a really big announcement during the uh, award ceremony too that they're uh, if not next year but the year after they're gonna have the IPMS national show here in San Antonio which will run for three days it'll be a huge show they'll have to actually get into a uh, bigger building and everything so if uh, you guys uh, any of you guys out there can make the trip down here to San Antonio and check it out you'll be glad you did it's uh, this show here alone is one of the bigger shows uh, across the country it's uh, uh, a really large show like you can see there but we had a lot of fun with that and uh, ran into some people that uh, watched the show. Uh, can't remember everybody's name, but uh, you guys are actually going to, uh, some of them are from around the area, and we talked about having them come in and be do a guest appearance on the show with us and visit the shop and everything. So in upcoming weeks and months, you'll see that, and that'll be a lot of fun. They were all really friendly guys, and uh, I met one fellow in particular named Alex who had his uh, two young sons with him. I think they were around 9 or 10 years old. And he was telling me that because of watching the show and everything, his sons have gotten interested in building models. They used to build Legos and everything, so it just made my day when he told me that. And he you know, talked about how much he appreciated uh, what we do here and everything. And it just really made me feel good and made it all worthwhile and everything. So really happy to meet everybody that we talked to there. Had a great time, like I said. But uh, uh, again, looking forward to next year. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break here, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do our uh, out-of-the-box kit review of the... Uh, uh, Midway aircraft carrier that we're going to build up as the USS Enterprise. We'll see you with that in just a couple seconds, everybody. Stay tuned.
Okay, everybody. Well, it's time for another out-of-the-box kit review for you guys on the show. This is a really nice kit. It's a vintage kit. Uh, again, my good friend uh, Calvin Sweet sent this to me. This is the Ravel Battle of Midway Carrier Kit. You can build this uh, kit up as any one of the three carriers that was involved in the Battle of Midway, either the Enterprise, Yorktown, or Hornet. And I'm sure you guys will know that I'm going to be building this one up as the Enterprise. I've wanted to uh, build the original World War II version of the Enterprise for a really long time. It was the most highly decorated uh, ship of the war and uh, just had a fantastic history. Was there from the beginning to the end and made it through a lot of battles. And uh, it's just uh, an incredibly uh, historic ship. And this is a nice kit. It's uh, not listed as far as what the scale this is. I'm guessing it's around 1 530 scale or somewhere around there. It shows on the box here that the overall length is 20 and a quarter inches. So it's a nice size. And... Uh, but if you get a hold of one of these kits, you can uh, have your choice of building all three of these ships, which is really, really cool. So let's take a look at some of the uh, box art here before we open it up. You can see that you've got uh, some pictures of some of the different ships. You can see the distinctive uh, sort of wave pattern that we see on the side of the Hornet there. Uh, and you can see a little bit more of it here on the side uh, panel here with this photograph. And these are actual photos of the model kit itself. And over here on the other side, we see some more... Uh, pictures of some of the details. Uh, there are some subtle differences in the ship uh, uh, between the three ships. Uh, I believe the Enterprise was the only one that had, uh, uh, as far as this kit's uh, uh, made up, as far as uh, having radar available, radar mast up on the top. But uh, somebody could uh, correct me if, if I'm wrong about that out there. But there's some subtle differences in the superstructure and things like that. But uh, you've got your uh, SPD dive bombing aircraft that were uh, present on all three of the ships that you can deploy on the deck. We've also got the ability here to uh, modify the flight deck and have it displayed with either the elevators open or closed or up or down if you want to call it that. So we're going to probably open up one of them and have it uh, so it's maybe on the forward deck with the elevator down and on the rear deck uh, in the up position, something like that. So I'm really excited about uh, building this model. I've uh, wanted to build this one, like I said, for a really long time. Let's take a look at what we get inside the box. And we'll have a look here first at the uh, hull, which uh, comes molded in one piece here. And you can see it's a nice size. It's got some pretty nice detail on it for this scale. It's got all the portholes in place. Uh, just, you know, cast into the side here. Uh, you got your propeller shaft emplacements and everything. It's interesting that uh, even in the uh, early part of World War II, they were starting to experiment with what they call the bulbous bow. It's where the bow is sort of bowed out here at the front for uh, more fuel efficiency. Um, and the Enterprise was known as being a fairly fast ship. Uh, one thing that's really kind of amazing here is I was looking at this, the rudder on this for a ship this size is actually pretty small, but the Enterprise was really known for being maneuverable as well. So pretty interesting stuff there. But you can see we've got some of the hangar bay detail over here on the sides. These, these hatches could be all opened or closed depending on what the sea conditions were. But uh, some nice detail there on the sides, like typical Ravel. Uh, we'll pull some of these individual parts out here. We'll look at the flight deck next. And you can see that um, the flight deck detail is really nice here. You've got your three elevators here. You've got all the uh, planking, the wood planking, nicely detailed here. All the catch wires are in place here as well uh, for when the aircraft made their landing. So some vents here and there. So the detail on this is really nice. If we paint this up with a nice wood finish and we do some weathering on this, it'll really uh, make that pop and it'll look really great. Got your expansion joints here on typical of a really large ship. Uh, the hull had to have the ability to actually flex a little bit. Um, so that's really great. Got a couple of gun emplacements here for the five inch guns. And uh, we'll look at the uh, next big sprue here, which is uh, some of the uh, anti-aircraft gun emplacements here with the gun tubs. Some more here. Some of the smaller uh, AAA. Uh, got part of the smokestack detail here. Just some various equipment details. The cap for the main smokestack here up on the top. We've got the nice um, Enterprise uh, CV6 uh, plaque here, which will paint that up really nice and mount that on the display stand when we're all finished up with that. So that looks great. We've got the uh, several flights of uh, SPD dive bombers. Got some uh, lifeboats here. 
and uh, some more catway, catwalks and walkways, decking and things like that. Some more parts of the smokestack and superstructure. The main, uh, one of the main cranes here at the back. And uh, these parts are really nice. They're all nice and clean. I don't see a lot of flash on them or anything like that. Just a little bit here and there. We'll be able to clean that up really easily. And uh, let's see, we'll grab this last really huge sprue that's in here. Uh, here we see more parts of the superstructure, uh, some of the deck bracing and things like that. The main anchor chains here up at the front, uh, the lower hangar, hangar bay area. This will all be detailed out if we decide to uh, uh, build the, uh, as I mentioned with the hangar bay, the hangar elevator door retracted, we can have some detail in there. Here we have the base for the main island. Uh, with the uh, conning tower and everything. So this is really, really cool. Got some nice detail here for the stand with the nice anchors uh, that we can paint detail all that out and make that look really nice. So this is a great, great kit. Some more, uh, got some little bending on some of the gun barrels here, but we can fix all that. A couple more cranes here. The main uh, hull anchors forward. Uh, these are the five inch guns. Some of the later carriers went with um, dual barreled 5 inch guns, but these are the early version of the single 5 inch gun barrels. And we've got some individual parts here, part of the uh, hangar bay detail, another lifeboat, a couple of loose SVDs in here, another uh, part of the catwalk system. And here we have a bag full of um, small loose parts that Calvin was nice enough to put them in a nice Ziploc bag so they didn't get lost. We'll just kind of dump these out in here. Take a look at some of these. Your other name plaques here for the other ships. We've got the uh, CV-5, which was the uh, Yorktown, which that carrier was unfortunately lost at the Battle of uh, Midway. And then the Hornet, which launched the famous uh, Doolittle Raid, if you guys are familiar with history. We just got some more uh, superstructure detail here, some more of the uh, hangar bay detail on the sides of the hull. Nice little stairwell here. I'm not sure what these little stanchions are. It looks like more stairs, part of the superstructure. And uh, I think this might be just a piece of uh, sprue. But we've got everything here. Everything looks to be present. So we're going to have a great time building this up. It'll be uh, the first time in my uh, modeling career that I've ever built up an aircraft carrier. So I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be uh, a lot of fun because it's... Uh, my absolute favorite aircraft carrier of all time. I love the original World War II Enterprise, and I'll have a nice Enterprise model to go along with our uh, Starship Enterprise. I've always had wanted to have that on display, and um, so this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll do a lot of nice weathering on this, and we'll, uh, like I said, do all the uh, detail on the deck here and everything. I've got to come up with some markings. We've got um, some small uh, decals here. I'll show you. I think they're in this bag right here. Um, that uh, have the uh, detail for the uh, we've got our markings for our aircraft and let's see we've got some small little white markings I'm not sure what they're for but you've got the name at the stern of the ship one Enterprise Yorktown or Hornet but we've got to have some big numbers um, for the top of the deck here uh, so I'll figure out there's probably somewhere I can go online and um, um, you know, look for a, a file that has these. We want uh, the number, big number six here at the front. And I'm not sure it might have had some six numbers markings on it somewhere else on the, uh, maybe on the side of the smokestack or something. But we'll look all that up and make sure we get it accurate. But we'll probably have to download some stuff and print it off. Uh, here we've got our uh, four propellers or screws, as they were called, on the large ships. So... Everything seems to be here, and I want to I again thank Calvin a lot for uh, sending this to me. I really appreciate that, Calvin, and we're going to do a really good job building this one up. And uh, Calvin, I think, said he's had this kit in his stash for a long time, so we want to make sure we do a really nice job on it. And uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I always enjoy uh, the Rebel kits, especially for their military stuff. They do a good job with all the detail and everything. This is not the most detailed model, and, you know, you can get larger scale ships that have quite a bit more detail, but uh, this won't take up a huge amount of s space on the uh, on the shelf, and it'll be uh, really nice when it's all done. So 
Uh, we'll probably start on this one in the not too distant future here. I'm really excited about it. So you guys can look forward to seeing this one built up on the channel. And uh, again, if you're interested in one of these kits, you can still find these. Just have a look around on eBay and Amazon and stuff like that. They're not really uh, super expensive. I actually saw a couple of these at the uh, uh, Fiesta model show that we, that we just went to. So um, they're still out there and readily available. And it's actually pretty hard to find a... Uh, kits of the uh, Enterprise. Uh, a lot of the other carriers are fairly well represented, but the Enterprise is kind of the hardest one of them all to find, it seems like. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed our out-of-the-box kit review for tonight. Uh, we'll be coming back in the upcoming weeks, and we'll show you plenty more kit reviews. We're going to review the kits that we uh, picked up at the Fiesta Show, and we'll be getting new kits into the shop here as we go along, and we'll keep on doing that because I know you guys enjoy that. So we'll be showing some you know, vintage and current kits that are out there available. So uh, okay, guys, we're going to be coming right back, and we're going to go to our uh, on-the-bench modeling tip for tonight, and that's actually uh, doing a little bit of uh, paint polish work on our one of, the, one of our scale model cars that we talked about. A lot of you guys have uh, sent in requests wanting to know about that. We've worked on our 1966 Chevelle Street Rat, and uh, we had a couple little uh, specks of dust that got into the uh, clear coat on the roof of the car. So we're going to show you... Uh, the technique that we use to get rid of those and buff it all back out and it'll work on doing the entire body if you want to do it that way and we'll uh, share that with you so we'll come back with that in just a couple seconds guys be right back after the break Alrighty, folks, well, here we are. We're taking a look at another modeling tip for you guys. This one's uh, by popular demand. Uh, you can see that what we've got here is we've got our 1966 Malibu SS Street Rat kit that I just finished up a little while ago. And I put down a nice paint job on this model, and I used our automotive clear coat that we talk about. And uh, I've allowed the uh, clear to harden up now for two or three days, which is something that I want to say before we start off, which is really important when you're going to uh, do any kind of buffing. Uh, on your model kits to remove any imperfections in the paint. You definitely want to make sure that the, the uh, paint, whatever it is, whether it's lacquer or acrylic or you know automotive clear like what we're using here, is fully cured because uh, if it's not fully cured, you'll just wind up doing more damage. You won't be able to get the scratches out. It'll remain uh, too soft uh, to polish it, and you'll just wind up um, creating more problems than you want to deal with. So uh, this has been painted with our... Uh, Automotive clear coat, which is a two-part catalyst, which uh, it, it hardens up really nice after about two or three days. 
And so we're ready to go here. Now, what we've got on this one is we've got everything looks really good on the model, but up here on the roof, and I'm not sure if this camera will pick it up. There's uh, three or four small little blemishes up here on the top of the roof where we got a little bit of dust in this where it um, uh, just, you know, something settled on the top of it. And we've got one right here on the back of the deck lid right, right there that you can see that's really kind of small, but it's, uh, if you want your, you know, if you're seeking perfection in your um, paint job, you want to uh, go back and fix all that. It's unavoidable. You, no matter how clean of an area you have or whatever, you're going to always, almost all the time, get a few little specks of dust in your, uh, in your finish. But uh, with this method here or some other methods that are out there that you can go look on YouTube and find out about, uh, it's fairly simple to uh, 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 go back and repair those and make those look, uh, you know, basically polish them out and make them disappear. So let's get things going here. Now, what I've got here is I've got just a uh, basic um, piece of 600 grit sandpaper. Now, you can go a little bit finer if you want. You can go like 1,000 grit, which I happen to be out of right now, but this uh, 600 is going to work just fine. And uh, it's uh, special sandpaper. It's a what they call a wet-dry paper, which is what you want to use. And uh, so we're going to put just a little bit of water here on the top of our uh, roof and on top of our deck lid. And we're just going to take our 600 paper and make sure we keep it nice and flat. We're just going to gently um, rub it around uh, on the top here. We don't want to go, you know, all the way to the edges and things like that. We're just going to stay in the areas where the uh, where we know our little blemishes were. And they kind of get hard to see once you put the water on there, but you got to kind of remember where they were. So I remember that this one here on the deck lid was just kind of right in this area right here, and I'm just working it down. And if you're, once you do this for a little while, you can. Um, actually feel this with your finger when you're uh, when you're you know sanding it like this you can feel the uh, the little speck of whatever it, ever it is there and as it starts to go away you'll be able to feel it in your finger that the resistance of the sandpaper snagging on it or hitting it or whatever is starting to go away and you don't want to over sand you just want to sand you know a little bit like this and then stop and uh, we'll take our we've got our a detailer's towel here, which is, uh, this is another really important component to have. This is what they call a microfiber towel. It's a special towel, which is super, super soft, and it's got these special fibers built into it to, for uh, polishing and, and, you know, uh, hand rubbing and things like that, and it leaves behind no residue. So you want to use a nice, clean towel, one that hasn't uh, been used for anything else, and you want to kind of, if you're going to use these multiple compounds here, like we've got a, we've got a sort of a medium and then we've got a fine compound. So you, if you're going to be using the same towel, you want to kind of keep track of. Uh, if you've got your, if you want to use the, uh, start off with the medium compound, you want to maybe put it up here in this corner and then hand buff with that. And then if you're going to finish up with the uh, fine compound on the same towel, go to the other side so you're not, you know, you're not uh, rubbing over the same area with the with the medium stuff and and creating new scratches that you're trying to get rid of. But we're going to kind of cover that here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe it off now and let it. So I can see it with, you know, with it being dry. And I can see that on my deck lid I got rid of that little speck. I can just see barely like a little edge of it still there. So I'm just going to touch it again just a little bit here. It's just barely there still. Okay, we've got that. Just that easy, it's pretty much gone. And we'll take a look at what we've got up on the top now here. I can see one right here in the center still, which we might have to go down a little ways because that one's actually sort of like a little depression in the paint. It's not, uh, it's not up high. It's, uh, it's just like a, got just a kind of tiny little uh, sinkhole in that. Now, like I said, you want to be gentle with this uh, sanding uh, because you don't want to sand all the way through your clear coat. Uh, I've got two coats of clear on this model, so it'll take a lot of sanding before I would go all the way through it, but. You always want to be careful. Don't go too far. It takes a little bit of practice. You can actually uh, practice by getting some, you know, pieces of sheet styrene and stuff like that. Spray a color on it, then uh, spray some of your clear coat on it, and uh, practice, you know, uh, buffing that out before you actually do it on an actual model. And you'll get you'll get the feel for, uh, you know, what you're going to need to. Uh, control your fingers and everything to make this um, uh, work for you. Okay, so now we've got, you can see, we've got basically these sort of dull spots here on the top now where we had our little blemishes there. 
So now what we're going to use is we're going to use our Dremel tool here. Now you can, you can actually use this compound and buff this all out by hand if you want to. Um, but it'll take you a little bit of time. You just have to, like I said, be patient and, you know, work it a little bit and then check it and work it a little bit and check it. But we can speed things up here tremendously, just like you do on a real car by using a uh, wool-based uh, polishing pad here. And this is actually made for scale models. This comes in your uh, Dremel accessories. It's got a special arbor that they kind of screw into if you buy the uh, uh, Dremel accessory kit. And it's critical the speed you run this at. I'm running this at about a little bit under two, which is uh, fairly slow. We don't want to we don't want to spin this thing really fast because what you'll wind up doing is you'll you'll actually burn the paint. You'll 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 create so much heat that you'll start to uh, make the paint melt. And you don't want to do that either because you'll cause some real real bad problems. So keep it uh, keep it at a really low speed and uh, just work your way around real gentle. And you don't want to use a lot of this compound either. You don't want to you know, put so much of it on there that you're going to splash it all over the place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put just a tiny little bit of it on my fingertip, about like that. I'm just going to kind of, you know, work it down just a little bit, and then I'm just going to rub it on here. And we're going to, we don't want to uh, put it on the back part yet because we're only going to work on the roof so far, but let me show you what this looks like. You can see we didn't put a lot there at all, but that's plenty. We don't want it to splatter and spray all over the model here, so we're just going to start off now. We're going to uh, just gently run this over the top. Now, you want to keep this not totally flat, but just a little bit lifted up on the corner. You don't want to be like too far like this tilted, but you want to be, uh, you don't want the center part touching on there because the arbor could come through the wool and cause some scratches. So we're just going to gently lay it on its side like this. And we're just going to start letting it do its thing. Just like on a real car. Okay. And when your compound starts to dry up on you and, and kind of disappear a little bit, that's when you need to use a little bit more. You don't want to, you don't want to polish on that and polish it until it's dry because with no compound there, the friction will build up quickly and cause heat, and um, you'll definitely burn the paint. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, I maybe got just a little bit too much there, but that's okay. We'll take our paper towel and we'll just kind of tamp some of it off of there and get rid of some of it, just like that. We'll start again here. I'm going to speed up just a tiny little bit too. I'm going to go to about two and a quarter here. I'm just kind of looking at it with my eye, and right here in the center, I can still see some scratches. So you're just going to have to repeat this a few times. Like I said, be, you know, be patient. And uh, you'll start working it all the way down. Okay, it's time to uh, wipe it off here and see what we got. Still looking just a little bit dull, like right there in the center, so we're going to just go with a little bit more here, guys. Otherwise, it's uh, coming around pretty good here.
All right, let's give it a wipe down again. And while I'm doing that, I'll mention that uh, anytime you're doing your buffing on here and you're going to be on any of these hard edges, like, you know, the tips of the fenders here or anything like that, be really extra careful and don't buff too long because those areas uh, that stick up, the paint's going to be, uh, the, the paint and the clear coat's going to be a little bit thinner in those areas and you can go through it a lot easier than you can on a flat surface. So just kind of keep that in mind. This just all comes down to um, experience and practice and everything like that. Um, so, you know, but like I said, you can, you can uh, do this by hand too. You know, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. And, you know, we're doing this on this model that's already been assembled. Now, you'd want to do this normally. I had to get this model built kind of in a hurry to take it to the uh, Jersey Fest show, and I didn't have time. Um, but, uh, uh, you, you know, definitely be easier to do this with the body off of the car, you know, before you finish uh, doing all of your uh, final detail painting and everything and final assembly. But, uh, as I said, I'm being careful not to splatter too much uh, uh, compound all over it so it's not going to get splattered all over on the inside and all that. You know, just kind of keep those things in mind, too. Now we're looking really good here up on the top. It's uh, pretty much got its uh, its gloss back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the, uh, um, just by holding on to the arbor here, I'm going to flip this pad over just by unscrewing it and screwing it back down on the other side. So we got kind of a clean start. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, go to our finer compound here, which is called a, a swirl remover. It's for, it's like, you know, micro, micro fine, so it'll take out our really fine uh, scratches that are still in there. Got to get some to come out here. Don't want a whole blob of it. And um, we're going to buff just a little bit, but then we're going to finish by doing it by hand, which is what we always want to do. So get a little bit of that on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and slow this down again. I'm going to go back to just under two. When you do your final buffing, you want to slow it way down. That's how you get, that's how you avoid getting swirl, what we call swirl marks in it. And you just want to kind of move it around really slow when you're doing the buffing too. A little bit too slow there. Okay. This is the exact same way that professionals polish out full-size cars. Okay, our compound's just about dried up there, so we'll go ahead and wipe this off. Looks really nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take just a little bit of the uh, fine compound again here now. And I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit on the towel and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put two like two fingers underneath of this and I'm just gonna buff the rest of it out by hand now. Just you know kind of going in a nice circle like this. You don't want to go back and forth because that can create like you know longitude or latitude lines and you don't want to do that. You just want to go go in a nice circular motion like this. Back and forth, you can switch directions if you want to. And then a final wipe down. And uh, I'll hold this up for you now, and you can see that we've got a beautiful shine on this again, and it's just like glass, and our little blemishes are gone. So now it's time to work on the uh, spot we've got on the deck lid there. I'm going to swap my uh, polishing pad back around here because we got the coarse stuff back on the other side there. And we're going to put a little bit of that on the uh, whoop, wrong one. Got to go to our coarse stuff. Medium coarse actually. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. Now what we can do too is to keep it from getting splattered on that uh, 
back window, we'll just carefully lay our towel over the top of this, and we'll make sure we stay away from it with our tool here so we don't get caught on that, hopefully, and get snagged and get it wound up in that, but we'll be careful if we can. And I'm going to go back up to around two and a quarter on the speed. And we're just going to go over it. Okay, just go ahead and give it another shot here because we started getting kind of dry. Okay, let's give this thing a wipe down now and uh, see how she looks. I can still see some, uh, not really scratches, but just kind of some swirls there in the middle. So we're going to go for this one more time. Yep, we're not trying to uh, not trying to set a speed record here, guys. So, like I said, just take your time. I'm gonna slow this down just a tiny little bit. Okay, let's have a look again and see where we're at. Okay, much better, much better. All right, we're ready to move up to the uh, fine polish now. We'll switch around our uh, pad again. Now these pads will last you quite a while once you, you know, um, when you're done using it, you want to uh, wash it with some with some soap and water and get get the old uh, compound off of there so it doesn't get hard on you. But uh, that was a step that I forgot to do uh, before we started on this tonight. But uh, and as far as replacing the pad, you'll know when it's time to replace the pad because you'll start seeing the the tip of the uh, the arbor starting to stick out, and that's when it's time to switch pads and, and start using a new one. Okay, we're going to spin this pretty slow. Okay, we'll wipe this off and have another look.
She looks beautiful, guys. Really good. Now, uh, if you get any of your wax down in the cracks here or anything, like in your edges of your seams and stuff like that, you can just take a little bit of water and squirt it in there and wipe it off. If, you can't, if it's a little stubborn, you just take a nice, uh, uh, you know, nylon toothbrush or something like that and just kind of scrub it out of there and then just run your towel over it after that and it'll clean right up for you. So now our final step now is we're going to do a little bit of hand buffing there in the center with our fine compound here. Um, talking about these compounds, this just happens to be the brand that I'm using, guys. There are all different types out there made by Meguiar's and uh, Turtle Wax and, and all kinds of different ones. Just uh, go to your local uh, auto parts store and tell them what, you're, what you want to do. That you want some uh, medium buffing compound and then you want some uh, fine uh, swirl removing polish and they'll, they'll uh, steer you to the right products. But they're all pretty much the same. Uh, but these just happen to be the ones that I have here. So they all work really well. And I'm just, I'm just going over this just to get the final last little bit of uh, tiny, like microscopic scratches that are there, getting those polished out. And I'm gonna go, go ahead and go over the uh, top here one more time too, since I've got plenty on my towel here. Now what you would do here finally guys, when you're all done and you're happy with your um, your buff job and everything and you've got rid of all the scratches, you'll want to um, finish up with a, with a sealer coat of wax. And I, what I recommend for wax is um, the uh, Meguiar's Gold. It's a, uh, it's, it's a liquid type wax and it, it, what it does is it dries clear. You just put a little bit on your towel here and just rub it on and let it dry. It'll sort of haze on you a little bit and then you wipe it all off. It'll leave a beautiful shine. It'll fill in any of the really tiny little microscopic scratches that might still be in that paint and it'll make it look as smooth as glass and it'll uh, help prevent the model from showing um, fingerprints and things like that. It's what the professional show modeler guys use and uh, it works really great. And the nice thing about that wax is it dry when it dries it doesn't dry with that white pasty look so it won't leave any you know residue inside any of your uh, you know edges or like we said the little seams and stuff here but I'll go ahead and uh, show this to you now just kind of clean it up here just a little bit and you can see we have an absolutely beautiful mirror shine on top of our surfaces here so that's what you do to your buffing guys now this is also uh, going beyond uh, your basic, uh, you know, removing this little uh, debris that we had on our paint. If you get a paint job and after it's dry and you see that little what we call orange skin surface, you know, where it's got that little bit of texture on it, um, you can also use this in the same exact technique to fix that. Um, you basically will wet sand the entire body, uh, you know, until you, uh, uh, you're pretty confident you've gone over the entire thing and then just start buffing on the entire uh, surface. And you'll, uh, in the end, when you follow all these steps like this, you'll find that you'll have a really mirror smooth, beautiful looking paint job. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all about preparation. Uh, when we talk about painting these models and everything, you see these extra steps that I take and everything before I'm getting ready to spray, you know, like going over it with a tack rag. And uh, you want to try to keep the dust down to a minimum, if at all possible, so you don't have to uh, do a lot of this kind of work when you're done. But this will give you a... Uh, uh, a showroom uh, award-winning show show car finish when you're all finished up and just beautiful it looks a mile deep and it's totally flawless and uh, you're going to be taking your models to car shows and things or model shows and stuff like that that's what that's what the judges look for they look for any kind of little uh, blemishes in the paint or anything like that and uh, but just for your own satisfaction when you put in so much work on your model and you want it to look really really nice as nice as possible uh, whether you're going to show the model or not it's an extra step that you can take to uh, make it turn out really, really nice. And this will work with your different types of paints, like I said, like your lacquers. Now, you have to be a little bit more gentle with some of the uh, like hobby-based paints because they're not quite as durable. I mean, this paint that I'm using here is uh, automotive grade, and so it's, it's really tough. It's, it's made to you know, stand up to the elements and against chipping and everything like that. So uh, 
you know, it, it would take a lot for me to, to, to go through it when I'm polishing it or when I'm sanding it. So when you're using like your, uh, uh, you know, hobby type, if you're spraying with cans or things like that, you want to be a little bit more careful because it's a little softer and you can go through it, but it will, you know, lacquers will polish out just like this. Uh, you know, just about anything that's out there, different type of acrylics. And you want to make sure, like I said, if you're doing a top coat with your clear, that you put like a couple of coats on there if you plan on doing a lot of buffing so you have uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, thickness to work with before it will go through. So anyways, guys, there's another modeling on the bench modeling tip for you guys, for you uh, guys that are building a lot of cars out there. And this will also work on all types of models. If, you know, if you wind up getting a little bit of debris in your paint and things like that, you can... Uh, this is what you can do to clean that up. So I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up this segment here, and then we're going to come back and head over to uh, our shout-outs and our Q&A for tonight's show. So we'll see you there with that in just a couple seconds, everyone. Be right back. Okay, back with you again, everybody. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. Like I said, we had a blast at the uh, Fiesta 35 model show, and uh, hopefully uh, next year's show we'll see some of you guys there and look forward again, like I mentioned, to uh, seeing some guests uh, come along and uh, be with us here on the show live in the shop and uh, hang out with us for the evening. Uh, Alex offered to bring some pizza when he shows up, so I'm going to hold you to that, Alex. And I like... Uh, I like uh, sausage and uh, pepperoni on mine, so <laughs> we look forward to that. Maybe you can bring your two boys with you, too. I think they'd enjoy themselves here, seeing what we do in the shop and all the stuff we got going on. But time now to uh, head over to the uh, shout-outs and the Q&A tonight. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that's been watching the show uh, the last uh, month or so. I've noticed that the numbers have really gone up on our live, uh, uh, the number of people that are watching the show live, and it's... and as we keep talking about, it's a lot of fun to join in and watch the show live and engage in the uh, uh, really fun and interesting uh, chat session that we have going on during the broadcast with the audience. Uh, they're in there talking about the work that they're, uh, the models that they're building and, you know, uh, offering tips and suggestions along the way too. So there's a lot you can uh, catch if you join in and uh, we hope you'll join us in upcoming episodes. Okay, guys, let's head over there and uh, see what everybody's uh, talking about tonight. And... Uh, We'll uh, head to the top here and may, uh, make our shout-outs. Uh, we've got uh, Chris with Classic Plastic is with us. Chris is uh, doing really, really well. He sounds great on his videos. He's been really busy just cranking out a lot of models and really happy to see Chris back in the saddle and full tilt and uh, right back where he was before. So good job, Chris. And uh, we all are really glad to see that you're, uh, looks like you're going to have a nice full recovery there. Got... Uh, Michael Kovach with us tonight, Shannon Freeman, B. Tilly, James Schulenberg, Chuck Brooks, 
Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Eric Hawkins, the Kitbash Kid, Alpha Tryon, Gary M., Clint Llewellyn's here tonight, George Volkowski, Ralph's here with Tenet Controls. Nice to see you, Ralph. I haven't uh, heard much from Ralph lately. I think he was on vaca uh, vacation for a little while. I hope you enjoyed your vacation, Ralph, and I hope uh, sales are going well for you. Got, uh, let's see, uh... Leona Timber Company is here, Federation Shipyard, Adam Corville, Triskelion's here tonight. Dan Harris is with us tonight. Scott Hall, nice to see you, Scott. Mitch Seagraves, uh, Mitch has been... Um, working on his uh, nice uh, scratch-built Galileo that came out really nice. He posted some nice pictures of that over on our uh, Model Shop Google page. Um, you uh, Hopefully you guys will uh, stop by there and give uh, Mitch a nice thumbs up on his work. We appreciate that for uh, everybody that posts over there. Make sure you guys uh, stop by there and comment if you can and give him a nice thumbs up on that. The guys will really appreciate appreciate that and uh, you know support their work. It's uh, they're taking their time and sharing it with us, so we uh, want to show that we appreciate that. We've got Holtzberry Hobbyist with us tonight, Dave Pashtag. Nice to see you, Dave. Dave sent in some uh, great pictures of a really cool little uh, hot rod model he built called the Hot Dogger, and we're going to feature that. I want to mention that next week, guys, we'll have a brand new uh, uh, viewers slideshow. We've been getting in a lot of pictures uh, from you guys, so we'll have a brand new show to share share with you for that uh, with that next week. A lot of uh, our viewers really enjoy that part of the show. Got Brian Knowles with us tonight as well. E-Biker e -biker 56, James Frost. And I want to mention James, too. James just finished his beautiful Papercraft Millennium Falcon. Uh, please uh, stop by and give James a, a thumbs up. He posted pictures of that on our Google page. Uh, James did uh, an outstanding job on that, and uh, he's sharing a lot of tips along the way for those interested in uh, getting involved in Papercraft building. And James is an expert at it, and I'm sure he'll be happy to answer any questions you guys might have about what you uh, need to get started and everything. We've got Up Caesar tonight. Nice to see you. Murphy Peoples is here with us. Murphy uh, just finished up his beautiful TOS 1350 scale Enterprise. Congratulations, Murphy. You uh, did an outstanding job on that. It turned out beautiful. Uh, Murphy it started to use uh, some of the uh, Speedsecker automotive paints that I use here in the shop, and he, I think he got really good results with those, and uh, he's learning how to use them, and he did a fantastic job on his Enterprise. And, again, stop by and give Murphy a thumbs up there. He'd really appreciate that. Uh, we've got uh, the Swedish Dr. Plastic. Nice to see you with us tonight. Roger Ball. And uh, Randy Gagliano. If, if uh, you guys are out there in the um, uh, viewing audience, make sure you type something in there in the chat so your name will uh, pop up and we'll give you a nice shout out. Appreciate you guys watching the show. I'm going to uh, scroll through back through here and see if I've got any questions. If you guys have any questions about anything, uh, go ahead and fire up, fire them up. <laughs> James Schulenberg says, "Come to the model shop. We'll detail your vehicle, please. No vehicles larger than 12 to 18 inches." <laughs>
looks like you guys uh, got some useful information about the polishing tip uh, we did for you guys tonight. I hope that works out for you. We had a, quite a few people uh, write in and request that one, so we're always happy to help out with that. And again, guys, that'll work on um, a lot of things uh, besides uh, the model cars. Uh, you know, if you've got, uh, like, your starships and stuff where you uh, get a couple little pieces of dirt and stuff in there, um, you can uh, buff those out and then just re you know go over it again with your most of the time you want a dull or finish on there you don't want it to be shiny but you just go back over that with a little bit of your uh, your dull coat or whatever kind of seal you're using and blend it back in and you'll be good to go Got uh, Roger Ball that checked in. Nice to see you, Roger. Not sure if I mentioned you before. Big stats. Uh, Dadnator24 is with us again tonight. Nice to see you. Question from Shannon Freeman: How do you mount a USS Enterprise bridge kit? Well, there's a, a few different ways you could do it, Shannon. On the one that I built here a couple years ago, I cut out a piece of uh, plywood that was, uh, you know, I cut it out. I laid the uh, once I built the basic floor or the you know the octagon kind of thing of the bridge. I you know before I did all the rest of the build, I laid it down onto a piece of wood and just traced around it, and then cut it out and then just sanded all the edges down and painted it black and uh, mounted it on top of that. Uh, then I, could, I ran my wire, you know, I made a little trench in the bottom of it so my wiring could call, come out through the bottom and then out through the rest of it. And uh, over to my, I had like a little plastic uh, leftover part from some other kit. It was like a, I think it was the Enterprise Incident Kit. You guys will know the one I'm talking about out there. It's, it had like a little display thing, you know, in front with a little grill for a speaker and all that. And it was a perfect piece to lay down on the front and mount my speaker and my little soundboard and everything in there and my couple switches and uh, you know in the center part of the bridge it's open so you got to put you know I used a little piece of uh, card stock and I painted it uh, uh, gray to match my um, you know the the color of the carpeting uh, or whatever color you think looks right for you when you uh, look at the way the bridge looked on the show and uh, because there's no floor there you know from the uh, from the basic kit so you just um, uh, kind of wind up with something like that and that worked out pretty good We've got uh, Tag is here tonight from T T Tagamo Model Works. Nice to see you, Tag. Uh, let's see. Um, Steve Arms is here. Nice to see you, Steve. Michelle Bennett's here tonight. A couple people are asking about where to go to get flocking. Well, the man for the flocking is, um, we like to kid him a little bit. It's Clint Llewellyn, one of our, our fine friends from the modeling Google, uh, model shop Google community. Uh, Clint bought a couple of pounds of that stuff a while back, so I'm sure he's got plenty of it. And I'm, I'm sure if you uh, email Clint or get a hold of Clint, he'll be happy to hook you up. And remember, if um, most of the time, if it's not the right color you need, you can just paint over it. Once you lay it down there, you just take your airbrush and mix your color up. 
and just you know dust over it and you can change the color on it too and it'll look just fine Clint's got enough of that stuff to uh, last him I think the rest of his modeling career <laughs> I've got uh, James Kirk here as well. I think James is one of the ones that actually wrote in asking for the uh, model buffing tip, so glad you enjoyed that, James. I've got Red Shirt Forever. Nice to see you with us tonight. Randy, Gag Randy Gagliano says he's using the uh, adhesion promoter uh, that he saw us use here on the show before he puts down his flat black as light blocker, and he's building an NX-01, and it worked out really nice for him. It made his uh, black stick and look really good on the inside. I'm glad that worked out for you, Randy. Yeah, I, I apologize a little bit, guys. The last two or three weeks, I haven't been as active on the... Uh, uh, I try to go on there and see if there's any questions people have and stuff, and I, I just didn't have time. I was uh, I actually got sick for three or four days there. I had a really bad uh, belly belly virus, if you want to call it that, for a couple of days, and then I got really hammered at work. And uh, so, uh, and I'm, I'm just totally buried here in the shop with uh, commission builds. But... Um, that's why I'm a little bit behind on uh, getting a little bit behind on the Blue Thunder too. But we're going to get cracking on that one again this week and get that one uh, caught back up. So on next week's show, we'll give you a nice uh, update on that one. I know you guys are following along with that one, so uh, we'll get that one back on track. <clears throat> James Kirk is asking about a uh, lighting. Uh, the question went by pretty quick there. Fixing lighting problems on your models and how to get back into the model. Well, there's a lot of different ways, uh, James. Uh, and whenever you get involved with, um, if you've got a problem after the model's been put together, you know, uh, it's kind of, um, it can be really difficult. I mean, even if you've been doing it a long time and you're experienced and everything, it's you just kind of hope that you can get everything back apart. You just want to. The best advice I can give you is that uh, you, before you do your closing up or, or you know closing the model or sealing it, if you want to call it that, you want to run all your lighting for quite a while. I, I tend to run if I build a circuit here, like for the window lighting or you know something like that, or I'm testing out one of the control boards that I use. Uh, I'll let it run for like 24 hours straight. Just let it sit here on the bench and run, and then come back the next day. And if it's still good, it's chances are. At that point, it's going to pretty much last forever because um, most of your problems are going to occur if you're going to have LEDs burn out or things like that. It's going to happen within the first couple of hours after you set it all up. So, um, But, you know, uh, one of the tips out there for getting the model back apart, if you have to, if you used glue and things like that, you could put it inside of a freezer uh, and let it sit in there overnight and bring it out the next day, and it makes the glue really, really brittle. And in a lot of cases, you can just kind of start squeezing on it here and there, and it, it will crack back apart, and it won't, uh, you know, if you're lucky, it won't break the plastic, um, and you can get the model back apart like that. But like I said, to avoid that problem, you want to um, do a, what we call a test burn on your on your lighting and everything. It's something that you, you know, all of us, when we started learning that, we all learned the hard way that, uh, uh, you know, you put something together, and if you don't have the right resistors and stuff like that, or if you had a bad solder connection or something like that um, it might not fail but like I said in the in the uh, first couple of hours if you've got wrong resistors or something like that that's allowing too much current to get to the LED like I said the LED might hold up for a little while but then it'll burn out um, uh, that will happen fairly quickly in most cases so if you've let it sit there for a day or two running and it doesn't burn out then chances are it'll it'll hold up for uh, qu for the lifetime life expectancy of the uh, LEDs, which most LEDs will run for a couple hundred thousand hours uh, these days.
Mike Squirrel is asking, is Meguiar's Scratch X equivalent to the uh, swirl remover you're using? Well, I'm not exactly familiar with that exact product, Mike. Um, it could be, um, but uh, that could be something that's considered more of a like a, a buffing compound that's made for taking out you know fairly significant scratches in a paint finish. So if that's the case, it would be a little bit too coarse. Um, what you're basically what they mostly call it the finest polish is called a swirl remover compound. It's a like I said, it's an extremely uh, fine. Um, in fact, like when you put it in your, you know, rub it in between your fingers and stuff like that, it, you you won't even be able to feel any of the uh, the grit, you know. And you know, you can actually take uh, toothpaste and do that too. You can put a little bit of toothpaste on on some uh, on a towel like that, and you can buff with toothpaste. It will take out fine scratches too. But you know, be aware it will leave a little bit of that white crust behind. So you gotta you gotta get that out of there if the, if it gets in the uh, you know, like the, the seams or, you know, the gaps in your, like your trunk or your door panels and stuff like that. Yeah, but if you go to your, uh, if you go to your local automobile parts, you know, whether you've got like an AutoZone or a Napa or whatever you have in your area, O'Reilly's or whatever one, uh, if you just talk to the guy in there, he'll, he'll, they'll, they'll have all those products right on the shelf, you know, um, and they're made for doing this this uh, buffing, and then you can get those little pads. You can actually find those pads in bigger sizes too that are made to fit the Dremel or uh, whatever type of. Uh, they actually make little miniature buffing uh, guns, if you want to call it that, are made specifically for that. I've seen those. I think they have them at Micromark and some of those places. So uh, they're made to spin at you know kind of slower speeds. Yeah, uh, Chuck mentioned that, guys. A little uh, uh, personal note for you guys. I um, it was a rough go of it, but uh, I was a smoker for about 20 over 25 years, and I've been I quit uh, now for like I think about it's been about three weeks, almost four weeks. So it was uh, it was rough. Uh, it was uh, for about three or four days there. I mean, they I guess the stuff they put in the cigarettes nowadays is like almost as addicting as heroin. I mean, it was a it was a rough haul there, and. Uh, but I think I'm over the hump now, and I don't think I'm ever going to go back. It was uh, great, uh, great to finally do that. Uh, it just, uh, it wasn't really for health reasons for me. I mean, I haven't had any, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had any ill effects from it. But uh, I wasn't a super, super heavy smoker. But um, uh, just the pure expense of it, you know, I was looking at it, I was going, geez, you know, for what I was spending on cigarettes in a month, I could buy, you know, a whole bunch of model kits. So, yeah, I... Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that I uh, that I, I did that, and and my my method that I was kind of talking to some other people about it was just a quit cold turkey, no uh, no nicotine patches, no gum, no anything, because to me the logic of it was is you know you want to get that out of your system right away, you don't want to you know leave it in your system, and uh, you know keep having the you know keep having it there, which would keep making you have the urge for it. Like I said, for about on about the fourth or fifth day after I quit, you know, it was really, really intense. But after that, it just gradually got, you know, lower and lower and lower. And and now I don't have the urge at all. I can look at other people that are smoking and don't think about smoking at all. And uh, uh, it's just uh, I can taste my food a lot better. And I highly recommend it. If you guys are smokers are out there, you know, try to try to give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. Save yourself a whole lot of coin, too. Okay, guys. Well, I, I think um, I don't see too many more questions uh, flowing in. Um, but again, next week, guys, uh, we'll be back on track here, and we're going to get back to the Blue Thunder. We'll have a new slideshow. I might start on something else. Uh, uh, haven't decided. You know, we've got the Mach 5 that we talked about building there a while back. We've got the little Nelly 
uh, the James Bond um, gyrocopter that we want to work on, but I'm kind of chomping at the bit to start on this battle of the Midway Carrier too, so I might butt that in line in front of everything else. We'll see, but uh, looking forward to getting it. You know, make sure you guys check out everybody's videos out there. Uh, several of the guys here in the uh, group uh, have uh, YouTube channels, and uh, they're busy building a lot of models, so make sure you support those guys. You know, stop by their channel, watch their video, give them a thumbs up if you can, help support them. Uh, you'll find that it's worth your while. They pass along a lot of great tips. And um, see a couple more guys just chucking in. I see uh, uh, Armando de la Cabada just checked in. Uh, Zach Faust, nice to see you guys. Um, and uh, like I said, make sure you support their channels, guys, like, like I mention all the time. And uh, please support our sponsor, Ralph at Tenet Controls. Ralph is uh, really helping us out here, and we really appreciate that. that what he's doing for us helps uh, pay for uh, putting the show on and, and allowing me to uh, you know, bring new kits and show you guys and everything like that and pays for the production time and everything. And uh, we really, really appreciate that. And uh, so make sure you guys support uh, Ralph. He's an outstanding uh, member of the uh, modeling community. He's, he's there ready to uh, answer questions if you have any about his products. And he offers the best products, in my opinion, on the market uh, of, uh, for what he does and uh, stands behind him with a warranty and everything. So uh, and you know it's really important that you get if you have an issue with something that you can you can contact the people that you got it from and they'll you know after they sell it to you they don't just disappear that's the big big uh, difference in my opinion on you know whether uh, you know where you when you make a decision about buying something from someone you know, especially if you're not familiar with it and you know if, if you can't figure out a problem and the guy's not there to help you you're stuck with it so Ralph's got a outstanding um, reputation for being there to help everybody so please support him when you can and um, we'd really appreciate that a couple more people checking in Perrin Greenway uh, let's see Rocket Boy 1969 Michael's here with us tonight Russ Startzell nice to see you Russ he's telling me to be careful with those decals in the Mach 5 yeah we've had a couple people warn me about that but I appreciate that Russ and um, so that's going to be a wrap for tonight, guys. I appreciate you tuning in with us and sharing your Sunday evenings with us. And uh, if you enjoyed what you saw tonight, please leave us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. It helps get, get the word out about the show. And, it uh, you know, the more we get involved, uh, the better it will be for everybody. So take care, everybody. We're going to be back next week at our usual time, 6 o'clock, uh, next Sunday night. And we'll see you then, everyone. Until we do, take care and happy modeling, everyone. Good night.